Good evening, and welcome to This Week in Joe's Basement. I'm Joe. And this is my basement. So, This Week in Joe's Basement, we're going to examine how our actions appear through the eyes of others. First item on that agenda is for me to respond to our first truly vitriolic piece of hate mail. In particular, we received an audio cassette from um, three Northside fans which is introduced by this note, which says, Joe, get fucked. Your show is the best thing we've seen, dot, dot, dot. A striking bit of ambivalence, which is accompanied by the title of the cassette, which says, This Week in Constructive Criticism. Anyway, well, what these three went on to do was to ramble on for about 15 to 20 minutes about how my show is self-indulgent, dull, and of little interest. <laughs> and, um, well, here is, uh, the episode they were responding to was episode 21, Fear of Failure, where I introduced the show and read some mail, and then showed a movie called Fear of Failure. And uh, here's that show seen through their eyes. Your little clip at the beginning was pretty clever. I mean, we were, we were all excited tickled. to watch it. And then it was just dumb. Well, okay. but Joe's, no. Yeah, you know, the whole idea is he's in his garage. He's in the comedy. He's, he's, in, his, he's in his closet. Welcome this week. Come on the closet, Joe. That's something else. Put some shoes on! Oh, you, oh, you got ugly toes. No, that's fine. My toes are way uglier than that. Yeah, they're, they're yeah right. but, I mean, reading the entire letters, we can read. We were done with the letter by the time you had the third <laughs> set. <laughs> I saw the smugness on his face when, he, when that one guy's letter said back. And he was sort of Letterman-esque. Yeah. Wacky yeah. eye cheeks. There's a little bit of Python here. Maybe a little bit of Letterman-type innovation. But Joe, I mean, you look, you look like you're like in, in your late 20s or so. So it looks like you've kind of. 87, old he's out. I don't know. 21 or less. No, there could have been a gradual project. Oh, man. Fear of, fear of yeah. failure. I don't know where he got the money. I don't know who funded that. Because the first shot was. was Yale. He was a Yale student. That's an expensive film. That's well, yeah, expensive. I mean, he could have shot it on me so with a good sound camera. But, I mean, your what cover magic was terrible. The marching the marching actors. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the teacher. Do you want me to do that with acting? The teacher totally blew his line out there on the top of that chair. Yeah, it Which describes the complete system. And that way function is given by this expression here. The curious thing... Yeah, where'd you get all those white shirts and sunglasses? My view is that you ask like all the guys in your frat, press them with the sword and the gun. I mean, the movie took twice as long that it needed to take. Uh, oh, I love it. There wasn't it. one Lord. thing of merit. The poker scene was, oh. When I did do a show, we went to our old student film. <laughs> and if we did, they certainly they beat the holy good Jesus out of that thing. I'm actually they'd be good ones. And if, we're, if absolutely nothing else, they're shorter. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, getting this overriding consensus that the film was pointless and, a, <laughs> and also a terrible waste of time and money. Yeah, it was long too. Did we bring that up yet? So long. It was, really long. <laughs> it was like 25 minutes long. God. And we were trying hard not to watch it. Well, obviously these people are very silly, right? And um, I certainly don't need to defend myself against them. In fact, they don't really deserve the attention I've given them so far. Much as they desperately crave it, right? I mean, come on, if they hated the show as much as they claim, then they would have just turned it off and stopped watching, like most of us do with TV that we don't like. Um, instead, what we have here, I think, is a case of fan identification in the negative sense. These people identify with me, and they're frustrated, so they dislike me, or they hate me, or whatever. And uh, they're frustrated by the fact that I have my own TV show, and they don't. And then I showed a student film of mine, which I got done. <laughs> um, I find the mindset sort of interesting. Uh, they, 
their frustration seems to have pushed them beyond rationality, almost in the realm of the psychotic, as they're willing to reach for even the most outrageously unreal stimulus to make me embody the worst of their frustrations. The best example of this, or the clearest example of this, I should say, is uh, when this fellow clearly saw a smug look on my face when I'm reading that letter with a letterman comment, when in fact we cut away to the letter and he couldn't see my face at all, smug look or otherwise. <laughs> anyway, so they make a number of interesting assumptions about me. Uh, they assume that I'm in my late 20s, that I was a film student at Yale, possibly a graduate student there, that my film cost thousands of dollars and was made in 16 millimeter, and that I'm now a film student someplace else, <laughs> and that I was in a frat to boot. Uh, well, anyway, in fact, Fear of Failure I made at the age of 20 as an undergraduate project at Yale. However, I was not a film student. I squeezed it in between my other classes while studying for a different major. Um, the funding did not come from the old man. It came from the school. Um, managed to swindle them out of the $1,000 necessary to make the film in Super 8, not 16. So, anyway, it's interesting to see how far off base they were. Um, anyway... <laughs> It's just, the response is obvious. Get your own show. Or better yet, you know, show us up on our own show. Send us your obviously superior student films. Show me for the fraudulent hack that I obviously am. And, uh, hey, we'll definitely put your stuff on the air. You know, let the viewers decide. Put your money where your mouth is. Well, not all of our mail this week was negative. Um, I received in the mail a, um, some press that we got in Philadelphia from the city paper. Philadelphia's free weekly leftist rag which uh, wrote an article uh, mentioning Joe's Basement back in August uh, when they hadn't even seen the show. And uh, I sent them a tape, and uh, they sent me the review that they wrote. In particular, the they was one Sue Spolin writes the following <laughs> on um, cheesy left-wing newsprint. Hey, Joe, what you doing with that camera in your hand? When Joe Winston saw his show mentioned in a city paper article about Philadelphia's lack of public access, he decided to actually send a copy of it this week in Joe's Basement for our review. Winston is the star of the show. The first thing you see is a wall full of photographs panned over very quickly. Then the pink, white, slightly shiny bottoms of Joe's feet appear on screen. He's reclining in an easy chair, and the camera catches his need of a shave face from between his bare toes. <laughs> he introduces the show while vigorously stuffing his mouth with pretzels, tearing the sides of the cellophane bag in the rush to get food in his mouth. Hi, I'm Joe, and this is my basement, he says. He's wearing an old t-shirt, sporting the name of a local Chicago restaurant in loud white cursive across the front. His hair is a little messed up, and geez, is he cute. <laughs> uh, <laughs> not sure I can go on. Uh, I'm going to have to get back to you on this, Sue. Um, actually, I talked to you on the phone, and uh, you sound pretty cute, too. We should have a beer sometime. If you're ever in Chicago, I'm buying. Uh, <laughs> anyway, she talks about the rest of the show, and she liked it. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> okay, <laughs> so, um, more good news. We won an award recently. Uh, Chicago Access has this thing uh, called CanFest, Chicago Access Network Festival, which they've cleverly made sound a little like Con, which is that thing in France where people win lots of awards. And, uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, Sledgehammer Diplomacy, Episode 9 of This Week in Joe's Basement. Uh, won a prize in the public affairs category. Won uh, first place, actually. There's no overall first place. It's like tied for with nine of the shows for first place. Anyway, uh, I managed to abscond with some footage of uh, how I performed <laughs> rather nervously, as you'll see, uh, at this ceremony when they gave me the award. And as you'll see, uh, they didn't show the clip that I wanted them to. And the professional gold award goes to Joe Winston for This Week in Joe's Basement, Sledgehammer Diplomacy an insightful look at race relations. Gold. Professional. You want to present it with an ignorant white person who's open to new ideas and not saying ignorant in any kind of derogatory fashion with someone who just doesn't know and ask you questions. I think, you know, black people should and have to be autonomous about that and and answer those questions and, and help those people come to an understanding of, you know, this is the way it actually is and not, you know, not what you've seen or, or you know, the stereotypes that you've heard. I think, you know, that it's, it's uh, I, don't, I don't think that white people are going to do it. it it's mo much more up to the black community to do the outreach and to take the first step.
Uh, hello, I'm Joe Winston, a producer host of This Week in Joe's Basement. Uh, the show you just saw a clip from was an episode of our show, which we called Sledgehammer Diplomacy. Uh, we decided to do a show on race relations. And uh, the way we approached that was to simply go up to black people and ask them what they think of white people, and go up to white people and what they ask what they think of black people. Uh, the segment that I asked the presenters of this award to give to show uh, was a white fellow in Uptown who said thoughtfully, <laughs> "Well, I've got a difference between black people and niggers. Uh, black people, they're okay, but niggers, I don't like." Uh, by getting people to say things that most people are afraid to say, and most other organizations are afraid to hear. Uh, we managed to get a pretty interesting show, which is in this category because it had some redeeming social value. Well, there you have it. Uh, now I know where the bow tie to my uh, my tux went. <laughs> Don't I appear out of my element just a touch, just a tad? <laughs> anyway, well, they didn't show the clip that I wanted them to. Uh, I guess it was just basically a mistake because uh, I talked to the fellows in charge, and there doesn't seem to be a censorship scandal here. But anyway, it's my show, so here's the clip that I wanted them to show to the public when they gave me this award. I got a difference between black people and niggers. Niggers are gangbangers. Black people are people who have respect for other people. That's my difference between blacks. I like black people, niggers I don't like. Like I said, some have respect, some don't. Some are just as bad as the other ones. Some are just, you know, some are cool. You can walk up and talk to them like you can a normal person. I mean, it's just depending on who you run into, that's all. Like I ask this guy, right, Rich? Tell him, man. Ask him, man. What's what you think? All right. All right, we're asking your buddy here what he thinks about black folks, and we're going to ask you the same thing. Don't like them. <laughs> hey, you don't like them. <laughs> anyway, well, this seems to have been one of our better shows. It's certainly gotten the most viewer response, and uh, so we'll probably be showing it again sometime during the Christmas lull <laughs> before our Cove Christmas special. Anyway. All right, so uh, this week, uh, of course, we're looking at Through the Eyes of Others, and actually the rest of the show is only peripherally related to that. So uh, let's just get on with it. So, uh, here we are. <laughs> yeah. Um, thanks for inviting me to dinner. Oh, thanks for coming. I've, I'm really happy that we, I wanted to get to know you better and see you around all the time, and you look like a fascinating woman. Th um, thanks. I'm, you embarrass I'm kind of shy, and compliments make me yeah. embarrassed. I'm yeah. sorry. Thanks. But I, I'm, I'm... You should get used to it. <laughs> um, uh, I'm glad you asked me. Yeah. I, this is nice. So tell me about yourself. What do you, what do, you do for the, the company you work for? I, I see you in and out all the time. I'm, I'm, I'm an insurance underwriter. Really? Mm -hmm. Really? An, an mm -hmm. insurance underwriter? Yeah. What... What does that entail exactly? I mean, I, I have insurance, but oh, I don't want to. Not sure exactly what. I don't really feel like talking about business. I mean, uh, I'm an insurance underwriter. I underwrite insurance. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, uh, what What do you do? I'm I'm in the food service industry. Are you? Yeah. Fascinating. Yeah. Fascinating. Mm -hmm. What do you do? I'm in a managerial position, actually. Yeah. I'm, uh, who Who do you work for? McDonald's. I'm um, I'm the counterman. Wow. But the, I'm the head counter man. It's a great man. corporation. Oh, it is. McDonald's it's one of them. McDonald's is, you know, huge. Ray Kroc's it's huge. like a millionaire. I mean, yes. Yeah, great. <laughs> Serve billions of hamburgers. <laughs> you must get sick of fast food. Oh no, no. It's very. It's, it's, it's so good. I mean, it's, it's a quality product, and you always know when you go in exactly what you're going to get. Um, like, like what you've got there. That's. Uh, very, well. Very good. It looks like. Looks very good, actually. It does. It yeah. looks delicious, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, I have. Lamb chop mm -hmm. with mint jelly, and it looks like uh, new potatoes. Yeah. yeah. And I'm not sure what the dessert is. I'm assuming it's chocolate because it looks pretty brown. Yeah, I went for the uh, I went for the steak. Um, you know, and is that like what that stick, is? I, I like to stick with the beef. You know, and they don't have hamburgers um, in this particular packaging. So you know, I went with the steak. It's it, it, it looks uh, good. Yeah, it, it should be very good. You know, and, and the potatoes are good. I, li I like potatoes. Yeah, potatoes, me uh, too. I love them. French fries. Oh, French fries are, are great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyway, would you um, you want to maybe have a drink somewhere? Um, you want to just blow up dinner? Yeah, I, you know, I'm just I'm feeling you know. Let's get out of here. I know a nice place around the corner. Yeah, it's kind of. Yeah, let's. All right. Let's. let's great. Thanks. Great. <laughs> It's much better here, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's, it's nice here. It's, it's not too crowded yet. Yeah, and I, I, I wasn't really hungry anyway. A drink is fine. Oh, a drink. 
Looks like a good drink, too, yeah. Mai Tai? Yeah. Love it. I love it. They're fun. The umbrella and the oh, little yeah. pineapple and the cherry, everything looks so fun and, and you know, party-like. Yeah, very, very food. Well, what did you get? Uh, I call it a Misky Wits, because uh, it's it's just all the all the whiskeys they have behind the bar. And by the time I just finish straight it, whiskey? Yeah, I, I started calling it a Misky Wits. And, That's know. a pretty strong drink. Yeah, yeah, it's it's very strong looking, isn't it? It's uh, it's uh, a, a brown. And, do I make you nervous? No, 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 not at all. Um, w would you like another drink? No, no, I'm okay. I mean, I've, I've got that the, the Mai Tai's huge. <laughs> yeah, I suppose you've got to get up in the morning then. Excuse me. I hate people watching. I know. So, um, so tell me more about your job. Um, you know, I, I've got insurance. I've got lots of insurance. <laughs> I guess I've always kind of wondered. Oh, what? I don't know much about insurance. What does an underwriter do? Oh, you mean what do I do yeah, as an insurance yeah, what underwriter? You, what, yeah. I, um... I get assignments oh, yeah? and, and I complete them. Yeah. Sounds wonderful. You yeah. know, insurance assignments. Kind of exciting. <laughs> do you mind? We're trying to have a conversation here and... It's okay. It's okay. It's just a bar. Everybody's drinking and getting kind of wild. Yeah. Hey, you know, this, this... I kind just... Of a crowd. I get kind of self-conscious, you know? Yeah. When, I don't know if it's just me. I... Look, buddy. Back <laughs> off, all right? Does it seem to you like, like, it's just me. I, mean, I just feel like everybody's watching me, I guess. <laughs> well, no, I, I kind of know what you mean. I feel kind of on display. You want to get out of here? Yeah. Just go for a walk? That sounds and, great. And, yeah, and we can just talk and not sure. be interrupted or anything. Beautiful night. Beautiful night. I'd love to get out Thanks. of here. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. I'd appreciate it. Okay, let's go. All right. Beautiful out here, isn't oh, it? Oh, it is. It is. Seems like the sun sets later every day. <sighs> Yeah. It's just nice being out here with you. It is. It is. I, <laughs> that sounds I should, so stupid. <laughs> I should get out more often. I feel like I spend most of my time just sort of sitting around the living room doing nothing. Oh, I know what you mean. But, oh, it, it is nice out here. And, you know, it's, yeah, good company, nice weather. Thanks. That's birds. awfully sweet. <laughs> oh, you're awfully sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Please. Oh, no, I mean, you, you look really, really good out here. And, uh, <clears throat> Thanks. Anyway, anyway, uh, I, I thought I saw a rabbit out here last week. Um, really? Yeah, on my way home. I Jeez. occasionally pass through this. Place. I haven't seen a rabbit in the longest time. Yeah. Mm -mm. Yeah, it was kind of, I'm, I'm not sure it's exactly what I saw, but I, it looked like a rabbit. It was kind of small and dark with a long tail. And squirrel, was, maybe? No, no. Squirrels have those big long fluffy tail? tails. Yeah, sort of a long skin. Like a rat? Tail Are you okay? Oh, my God. Can you get up? Are you okay? Unconscious. I think that I'm glad we came back to watch TV. Yeah, I, I'm I mean, the walk was nice, but when you fell apart there, I was so nervous and worried. And you, you handled it really well, though. I'm, I'm really glad you were there for me. No, oh, thanks. But I, I do love cable access. It's yeah, yeah. <sighs> As ignorance. I, the I really like it's what you know. too. And, and there's a lot of way people who don't know us. So do I. And don't know about us. And um, it's our <clears throat> it's our job, you know, to, to, I, to get out there and teach I feel like I'm really well, getting job, to know you. But, you know, when, when given the opportunity, we'll, hmm? you know, when presented with I just, I feel really comfortable around you. Ideas. Oh, yeah, so do I. not saying in any kind of derogatory fashion, but someone who oh, just doesn't know and ask you questions. I think, you know, inter black people should and have to be autonomous about that and and answer those questions and, and help those people come to an understanding. That was a really nice dinner. This is the way it actually really is. And not, I'm glad we did that. Not what you see. Yeah, it was. You know, and and thanks for the drink. That, that was great. Oh, that was really sweet. You know, my pleasure. It's, the country's been around for over 200. It's obvious that not, they're not going full steam ahead on it.
information am I missing that would make these events coherent? What plan was being pursued that, had I known it, would have made a given action predictable? Why would someone do something one way or another way? Seems better. Why was any given planned state of the world planned the way it was? What other event do I have in memory that is like the current one? How do we determine the ultimate cost and benefits of an action? How can someone who has asserted a fair have come to have known that fact? Who would have, have to know, to order, to have known that? How could they possibly be in a... What if that? 